chance, right? This is a, like couldn't be a better opportunity. <laughs> it's not a joke. It's true, right? But um, you know, I uh, also will tell you that uh, we have an honor council at the school, and I run the honor council with Miss Prantle, and I'll see you there. Um, right? <laughs> now, but if you're not like that kind of person, if you're the right kind of guy and gal. Um, you'll listen to this, which is this. I don't want you to use anything to do this. Okay? No outside sources. Capiche? Yeah, All right. Yeah, I want you just to just use your own noggins. The, the only thing, only uh, exception for that is this. If there are terms, you with me? Um, vocabulary, you know, historical allusions that you don't know about, you can do research, right? But I, what I don't want you to do is like, oh, I wonder what this means. I'm going to go find out what someone else thinks it means. The whole idea here is like we're learning how to do this. Okay? So if it's hard, fine. Let it be hard. Come and talk to me. Um, think a lot about it. But don't uh, take the shortcut. Capiche? That's, that's forbidden, verboten for this assignment. Got it? Come and talk to me if you need to. Write me an email. Get on it. All right, go. Uh, speak up, Luke. Is it okay to come up with some ideas we talked about in the, like, in the, in the class because like, I, I wanted to use some connection? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By, by all means, one of the goals is for you to like show how the book is unified, which would mean going back early. Like, for instance, we're going to read about the balloon tomorrow. Well, if you're not thinking about chapter 36, then you're obviously not thinking. You with me? Obviously, they're, they're related, so you want to think about that. Everybody got it? Yes. All right. Um, while we're on this, why don't we do this? I have a little something here uh, about the quarter deck. So why don't you take one of those and pass it around. Um, what we have here is not, this is a sample uh, like of uh, something I wrote uh, just to kind of show you the sort of trains of thought you might want to develop as you um, work on your chapter. So first of all, remember you're going to do a quick little summary. Yes? the big picture of the chapter. And then you're gonna put, pick an element or so to try to develop. And look, think about this a minute. What are some of the elements of a novel? Okay, so you gotta be here. What are some of the elements of any novel that you can kind of think about? Motifs. Okay, good, motifs. And we've seen those, a lot of those here. So you might wanna highlight a uh, recurring motif. What else? Okay, good. This is a thing that we've talked about with this. Did you get one for um, four miles back there? Yeah. That uh, we have this narrative tick or this narrative tendency to go from the literal to the figurative, right? And if you see that in your chapter, that might be a good uh, thing to notice. Uh, symbols, right? Um, if there are things that are emblematic and they need to be decoded, that's what you can do. If there are allusions that are either you've seen before and there's more of them or just a fresh one, either to history or mythology or to some other thing, that might be what you want to focus on. You might want to focus on uh, where you see de character developing, yes? Some new insight about Ahab or Starbuck or Ishmael. You might want to talk about narration, right, because that's been a tricky thing. Yes, throughout the book. Um, you might want to talk about some thematic things. Yes? We've mentioned a number of those. So you need to be going back and forth in your notes, um, thinking creatively, and come and talk to me if you want. Okay? So what we have here, real quick, I'll just let you look at this on your own. I'm not going to read it with you, but there's an overview that's just like the straight out, like here's how the story went. And again, do not go somewhere else to write your overview. This is like one of the great uh, writing challenges in life is to be able to summarize efficiently. Right? Here's one. Okay? Uh, but you could look at structure, and of course in that chapter it's important because we talked about how it became play-like. Um, here are some things about character development. Um, there's some symbols, right, um, that I talked about here, and each of these could have been expanded into a big paragraph. But I wanted you to see these if you could look at it. Uh, I don't want to take any time on this because we've done chapter 36, but just an example I thought I would um, pass your way. All right, questions. Brad? Um, I didn't get one. Oh, well, there you go. How about you, Cedric? Yeah, I do. You, are you interested? Yeah. Okay, there you go. And you should also notice that there's another example online. Did you see that? Yeah. What was that one on? Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Very good. Very 
good. Okay. Now, I think what we need to do is we need to get some more recitations out of the way here today. So you, between today and tomorrow, they all have to be done. So now's the time. If you haven't gone yet, it's your turn. Would you like to go, Nick? No. All right. Hit it, Nick. Please. 82, which is uh, uh, the honor and glory of the honor and glory of Wailing too. Oh, I forgot that I gave you that one too. Woo! So that's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. Let me ask you a couple quick questions. See if you're all on the same page. You ready for hand raising? All right. Number one is um, what is the Heidelberg ton? What is the Heidelberg ton? What is it, Brandon? I don't want to hear about that. What is the Heidelberg ton? Where people store like, expensive wine. Okay, it's a, a big what? Give me a name. Wine cellar. Wine cellar. Wine cellar. It's not a cellar. It's, it's, a it's a big cask, right? It's a big uh, barrel. How big is the barrel? Does anybody remember? It's like crazy big. How big? No. That's the whale. I think it said 40,000 gallons of wine. Where's Heidelberg? Germany. Germany. All right, good. Now, um, why is the Heidelberg ton included in the book? What is, how is it related to the whale? Why is no one raising their hand? What, how is this uh, anything to do with the whale? By the way, did you guys all notice my T-shirt? I got some compliments on it already. Do you know what you're looking at right now? Yeah. Like, who's this guy right here? No. <laughs> Look at him. Got like marketing on his face. Squeak away. And these are this is all Moby Dick right here. The book. So if you want to read sometime, you forgot your book, just come on over. Here's chapter twenty nine right there. Do you read it? I do. I'm a little bit like Ishmael. Do you remember what he does with those um dried whale skin? He likes to look through it and read his whale books. I like to teach Moby Dick in my Moby Dick T shirt. Wow. It is that's Dick. Yeah. All right, so let's do this. Uh, <laughs> um, why do we have a chapter called the Heidelberg Ton? What's it got to do with the whale? Go, TK. I think that's what, like, they're comparing it to how the parts of the whale, it, like, holds the oil. Like, the oil is, like, that wine, and it's, like, the casket that holds it. Okay, you're, yeah, absolutely, although you're not being very precise or exact. Does anybody understand this? There's something unusual about the whale? Give me, I, I want an anatomical name. What's that thing in the whale that's like the Heidelberg Ton? Case. The case. That's right. And I'll, I'll, you should have looked this up or look it up sometime. But the 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 um, head of a sperm whale is very unusual. It's not like other whales. I don't know if you knew this. And so on. So his eyes like back here. And this is. Do you remember how big this is? This is where old Stubb decapitated the head. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And how big is how how big is this? Pretty big. It's like a third. Great answer. Uh, it says about a third of the whale, and how big might it be? Like this is like 20 to 30 feet long. Remember that? It's very large. And if you remember, here, here, or you probably don't know this, but this is the skull of a whale. Like in the news, this vertebrae, or whatever, you know, back there. So all this is some cartilaginous matter. Are you with me? Um, kind of in the blowholes up here, right? And then, if you remember, there's a there's a uh, stuff in here, and this one's called the case, and the other one's called what? Oh, okay. Starts with J. The junk. junk, right? And what they do, if you remember, he, they cut this off and they upend it right next to the ship, and then they bust through here, and they basically treat it like a well, which is like a cistern, and they drop buckets down in there, right, and scoop out this stuff, which is not exactly oil. What is it? It's spermaceti which is a special, very valuable oil that's liquid already. What, I mean, where do they get most of the oil from the whale? From its blubber. And tonight, if you read Triworks, you'll see how they, they render, I don't know if you guys know that word. Look, you ever have bacon? Yeah. Right, you take something that's animal fat tied up with meat, and then basically by heating it up, you separate the oil out, you with me? And that's basically what they're gonna do to a whale in this chapter. But this is not like that. This is actually already liquid. And they just bail it out and it's extremely valuable. And there's like, like yeah, something happened. 
Yeah, and you'll see. Well, okay, we. Yeah, what happens to it when it hits the air? It kind of crystallizes, and the men all have to kind of squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it together. Squeeze the sperm steady, right? Where they end up squeezing each other's hands and look lovingly into each other's eyes, right? As if to say, right? Uh, that's a weird chapter, yeah. isn't it? Right? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let us squeeze into each other. Remember this? Yeah. Very strange chapter. We're going to get into that later. You understand my meaning. All right. Um, who falls in here? Uh, Tigo. Good. He was bailing the case. And then what happens to the head after he falls into it? It falls, it falls into the sea. And everyone's sort of like, what to do? And then, of course, who comes to the rescue? We play. And how does he get him out of there? Raise your hand if you know this one. How does he get him out of the case? Brad? Doesn't he take like a pocket knife? Or no. Some type of knife. Not a knife. He has a sword, right? Go ahead. And then he he pulls him out like a baby. Like he, that's right. Like he, I think what he does, he cuts it down here. Remember, this thing's you know, like <laughs> sinking in the water. And then he cuts it there and yanks him out, right? But he has to. What does he have to do first? Yes, he, he has to turn him around, right? Pull him out head first, because that's how obstetricians, I guess, do it, right? Very good. But why um, did he have to do that? Do it that way. We'll get to that later. All right, Jeroboam. Who's Gabriel? Yeah, he's like a prophet, right? He's actually a shaker. Remember that? What did he think um, Moby Dick is? It, what uh, is he? He's the, the incarnation of the, a god, a shaker god, right? And he, what does he say to the, the Pequod? Don't, don't, don't do not hunt this whale. We hear this whole story about this other guy who did and was killed in a really strange way, right? Nothing else was harmed but him. Um, and then later on we read uh, about the, the rosebud, yes? Oh, yeah. The bouton de rose. Uh, where's this ship from? The France. <laughs> Right? And what kind of whalemen are they? Not good. They are weak sauce, right? They're terrible. And what is, um, listen, they, what do they have next to the ship? Why are they all holding their noses? Oh, they, oh, they, they, have, have, noses. they have this like old rotting whale, right? Sticking up the place. And who swindles them? Swindle? You know the word swindle? Yeah. Who swindles these guys? Why aren't you answering my question? You don't understand what I'm going to Cheats them out of something very valuable they don't even realize they have. Why are you not answering me? Did you read this chapter or not? Yeah. Who goes over to the ship? No. Wait, are you guys? I'm very confused right now. Did you read the Rosebud? Yes. Did you not encounter a French ship that had a big, dying, rotted whale there? Yes, we did. Yes, they did. They're all covered up. One guy's got big wax over his nose because yeah. he can't stand the smell. 81. Did you read 81? Yes. Yes. Stubb yes. offers to row the whale away. Oh, yeah. Hello? Wait, did you? Am I? Am I huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Thank you. All right. Oh, forget about it, what I just said. Jungfrau, the Jungfrau. Which, by the way, what does Jungfrau mean? Virgin. And here's something you might want to make note of. Later on, there's going to be a chapter called The Bachelor. Huh? Now, it's interesting, of course, because the Jungfrau, what's the chapter called? It's called The Virgin, right? Or the Pequot means The Virgin. But the ship is not called The Virgin. It's called The Jungfrau, which means what? Well, Jungfrau. It just means young. It could, you could easily translate it to The Maiden. You with me? It doesn't have to mean virgin. It can just be young woman. But virgin is kind of handy because what is the ship absolutely free from? Whale. Like whale oil. Yeah, but what's another name for that? Sperm Sperm-a-seti. Oh. <laughs> are you, are you, like, do I have to explain this to you or are you with us, right? <laughs> Everybody's looking down. They're all 17 years old. Okay, look. Um, and like I said, there's going to be a ship called The Bachelor. Just wait for that one. So it's kind of funny. He, tra he, he translates the word in, to sort of suit his purposes. Are you with me? Just like he did, what other ship did we see this with? Where he names the chapter not according to the ship, but a, his, the albatross, right? So this is one of these things. Like, it's like a joke, right? It's an old whaling joke. And these guys are nitwits, right? They are the worst whalemen possible, these Germans, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, they, what do they do at the very end of the chapter? What do they go all after? Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, it's a finback whale, right? And if you remember, what do the Pequods do? They don't bother. They're like, you can't catch that whale. And there's a wonderful line, the last line of the chapter, right? It says, many are the derricks, my friend, and many are the finbacks, right? What does that mean? It means, like, there are a lot of unchaseable things in the world, right? And there are a lot of people who chase them. So, you know, again, he's giving you a little wink. Well, good. Like, what does he mean by that? Does he mean people who just pursue dreams that are, uh, like, hopeless? Or, mm, what did you just say? Uh, finbacks. Speak up. The Finback could be Moby Dick. And yeah. <laughs> so, like, on the one hand, we're being encouraged in these chapters where they meet uh, foreign ships that, like, Americans are the best, right? They rock. They know how to do this. They're so much better than these dopey Europeans, right? They're superior. Yet, we also see, like, oh, he could also be alluding to Ahab himself in this chapter, right? Now, look, um, these two chapters I always teach together because I think they're sort of bookended. Um, you know, we have poor Pip falls in the water, nearly drowns, and has this weird experience. What's the end result? <coughs> what, how is he at the end of the chapter? He's he, he scared? No. How is he different? Ah, oh, you're missing the point. He saw God's foot upon the treadle of the loom and spoke it, and therefore his shipmates called him mad. Right? He says he, he wandered around the ship an idiot after that, right? This was such a traumatic experience that he's like a madman now, right? He's insane. We're going to definitely talk about that chapter. And then, of course, we have the squeeze of the hand with this wonderful, joyous experience of sitting around in tubs with your friends and squeezing this unctuous, fragrant stuff back into liquid. These are thematically super important. Um, speak, Bradford. Hey, hey Phil, what? Can I use the bathroom now? Are you kidding? In a time like this? You, if you don't, you go quickly. I don't usually like doing this. But for some reason. All right, now look, let's do this. Um, what I want to especially focus on today is 78. This is a really important chapter thematically, okay? And I want to encourage you guys uh, with your presentations to think about what I'm about to say, okay? Look, se look, are you guys getting the rhythm of the book? 77, why is 77 there? Oh, technically. Yeah, that t that's the Heidelberg ton. Why is it there? It tells you about the Camden, why is it there? You need this to know chapter. What the case is for exactly. You need to know about this thing. Otherwise, you'd be in the middle of watching Tash Tigo fall in, and you'd be like, wait, what is that? Whereas this, he kind of gets that out of the way, that info, and you can just kind of enjoy the action, right? Very action packed chapter. Um, now, look, how would you characterize this action? This, this, the things that happened in 78. I mean, it seems like one word comes to my mind, which is bizarre, right? It's the most bizarre thing I can even imagine. A guy falling into a whale's head and then the head falling into the water. It's so strange. Agreed? Yeah. So listen, one of the things I would encourage you is this. If you see, um, and also what comes of it? What's the outcome of the whole thing? Like how does it affect the ship? One more time. He falls in. It falls in the water. They have to rescue him. How, how is the Pequod affected? How does it change the story? Like there was a, was it, or weren't they trying to like go after a whale? Or wait, that was with no, that's they a different chapter. Kind of Look, I, I, this, I'll make it a rhetorical question. It doesn't. Right? Like nothing changes. They lose the whale's head. Is everybody safe? Yeah. Yes. I mean, we get to learn that Queequeg is like a total stud, right? What did, you, did you read that line with a smile where he says, ah, my noble Queequeg? Yeah. yeah. You should, right? My noble Queequeg, right? Um, so anyway, my point is, if you read action or a scene that seems so strange, you should be saying to yourself, like, okay, Melville's up to something here, right? Like, it's too strange not to be noticed. And especially if nothing comes of it. Are you following me? That means he must have had some purpose for it that's not Im immediately obvious. So in other words, the plot is not going to change because of this. Like, what are they going to do the next day? Just continue on their journey, right? N nothing really, like, happened because of this, right? No one died, no great loss, no change of plans. But this should be uh, a kind of signal to you, like, this is important. All right, now, I'm going to uh, introduce a little uh, phrase here that I really want you to learn. We're not going to get very far today. I can see it, but it's okay. This is, this is 
this is like a big thoughts here. You ready for this? All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you guys a little phrase here. Which, uh, this is like a term that I've come up with, which I think, if you really wanna understand this novel, you gotta learn this, okay? Um, a confluence of elements. All right, this is one example of something that happens uh, throughout the book. And I'll explain to you what I mean by this in a minute. First of all, do you guys all know what this word means, confluence? Um, nobody. All right, well, it's a word that's um, used. Like no, no, no. Um, it's a word that's often used um, with rivers. So what do you suppose a confluence of rivers is, or a confluence? Like a meeting point. Uh, meaning point of what? Yeah, right, like two or more rivers meet and join and become one river. You follow, and that's called a confluence. And so what I basically mean is there is a convergence of elements in the book. And this is, as um, our friend Luke read, one of, I think, the artistic or aesthetic principles of Moby Dick. If you want to like really get a lot out of this book, you'll see this is one of the things Melville's up to. He'll take, he'll introduce to you a, a number of elements, okay, as we go along. I'm going to list them in a minute. And then there'll be these moments, these little nodes, where suddenly, boom, they'll all come together. It's like magic, and it's amazing, right? Um, I don't know how many of you have noticed that picture up there. Have you noticed that picture? Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Well, what is that picture? Quick, right? That's chapter 78 right there. Have you seen that? Have you noticed it? That's one, of the, that's one of the instances of this book, which is strange but beautiful in a, a curious way. So let me show you guys something. Let's, let's use this little diagram to start laying on the elements that converge here. You ready for this? Let's, okay, here we go. Now look, there's a guy in here, isn't there? Yes? Yeah. Now, when is the last time you heard about a guy going into a whale? And then being delivered out of a whale. Jonah. Right. This is there's a kind of Jonah quality to this little scene. Do you see this? And is Jonah is the Jonah story a motif? Yes. Now is Jonah mentioned in the novel? I mean, in this chapter, no. not at all. But you can't help but think of Jonah here. I think. Right. You got a guy who goes into a whale and then comes out of it. And has a kind of curious experience in there as well. Right. So that's one. Um, another thing is this. What have we been told that the whale's head is in its previous chapters compared to what? A sphinx. A sphinx. Very good. So we have the sphinx, yes? And, of course, what is the sphinx uh, all about? Like, what's in the sphinx? Information. Not information. That's not the right word. What is it? Knowledge. Answers. No uh, knowledge, right? So you have this idea of going inside the head, right? Either, you know, Figuratively, but in this case, a guy goes in literally. You ought to like move that thing around a little bit on your paper. It'd be awesome. Um, how about some more here for a minute, though? Like, what did he say the whale's head was like for Tashtigo? Oh, it's like a perfect place to die. Yeah, yeah. Before that, though, he says it's. I mean, think about it. Look at look at it. There's a guy inside of it who's about to die. What do we call this place? Yeah. It's a. He calls it a a coffin, a tomb. You guys remember this? Yeah. It's a kind of coffin. Hey, by the way, did it ever occur to you what the Sphinx is in Egypt? It's a coffin. It's, well, it's not a coffin. Tomb. It is a tomb, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's a place where you put a uh, dead person, right? Coffin and a tomb. Uh, by the way, have you ever heard of coffins in this book before? Yeah, yeah. I've seen some of these. Peter Coffin, the first time Ish we even meet Ishmael, he says he's looking into coffin warehouses. You guys remember this? Because he's got a drizzly November in his soul. It's kind of curious. It's a place to go uh, when you're dead, yes? And he's um, also, though, uh, since Queequeg is compared to an obstetrician or a, or a midwife, what is this place? It's not just a tomb, it's also a womb, right? Which is uh, very interesting. A, a tomb where you go in as a dead man, but then you arise again, um, and you're birthed from there. So it's a place of uh, rebirth, which, by the way, when you see tomb and then someone coming out of the tomb yeah you have this like Christ uh, illusion that's going on here have we seen uh, Christ illusions in the book before yes. absolutely all over the place right the crucifixion in his face the nail in the crown right all sorts of places speak and then how about this 
TK alluded to it already. Remember, Ishmael says, look, he says, if, tune in, if Tashtigo had died in the head of a whale, do you remember this line? He says, it would have been a very precious perishing. Because why? What's, what's um, spermaceti like? It's, what's it like, though? It's, it's like, uh, it's very uh, viscous, sort of smooth, and it also is very fragrant. Remember we learned that in chapter uh, 94, that it smells like what? You remember? It starts with a V. Give me a V. Give me an I. Violets. Don't you remember? He says it actually smells like violets. Now, think about this for a minute. You ready? He says, the only perishing or death I can think of, which would have been better, was which one? That Ohio honey, honey hunter. hunter. Remember who reached too far into the crotch of a tree and fell in and died embalmed in honey? Do you remember this? Yeah. And then he says this weird thing. He says, okay, now watch this. This is one of Ishmael's little trip ticks here, right? He says this. This guy almost died inside of a whale's head, right? Like that guy who died in a tree in honey. And then he says, how many... Think ye, likewise, have died in Plato's honey head. Do you guys remember yeah. that line? How yeah. many? It's the very last line of the chapter. How many, likewise, do you think have died in Plato's honey head? Now, what the heck does that mean that Plato has a, a honey head? And what would it mean to die? Who's Plato, by the way? Philosopher. Yeah, he's a Greek philosopher. So, look, what are, what's in a philosopher's head? Knowledge. Yeah, ideas, knowledge, right? And we've got, you know, Ishmael, what does Ahab want from that skull when he's looking at it? He says, speak. Uh, yeah, he's like, tell me the secret thing that is in thee, right? Yeah, thou hast seen, can we remember? Thou hast seen that which would split planets and make an infidel of Abraham. Remember this? And he, I want to know. But you won't say a word. Not one syllable is thine. Remember this? So we have this other idea that, like he says at the very end, this is like going into the head of Plato and dying there in his honey head. Yes? So what does that mean? What would it mean to die inside? I mean, you can't, like, literally get into Plato. Plato's head is not nearly this big, right? So what would this mean to die inside Plato's head and to sweetly perish there? Okay. You died and you died there. Yeah, but why? Like, what, he says a lot of people, isn't he saying a lot of people have done this? Right? How many think ye have likewise died this way? Like, maybe you need to think figuratively here. Like dying in the chase for knowledge? Oh, of it? okay. So it's like, maybe it's like, so in other words, it's not literal dying. It's like, uh, how, how could you die in relation to knowledge? Like, uh, in, in, yeah, I want you to think about this a little, a little more. This is kind of an interesting idea, which, again, all these things are converging in one place here. This one little scene, explosive scene. He's, he, because think about it, he's talking now not to Tashtigo anymore or to anybody on the ship. He's talking to, like, who could read Plato? Us. Yeah, us, right? And he's warning you. Don't go dying in Plato's honey head, boys and girls. Oh, too much knowledge? Have you ever heard of that before? Too much knowledge? Yeah, too much freedom. Knowing too well, look, think about chapter 70. What does he say to the whale? He says, Thou hast seen that which would what? Split plants and do what to Abraham? Make an infidel out of him. In other words, what kind of knowledge is in there? Yeah, it's like too much, right? It's too much. Did I talk about Raiders of the Lost Ark the other day? No. Okay. Don't make us depressed today. How many of you have seen the first Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, that's a sad story. That is so sad. Indiana Jones, they're looking for the Ark of the Covenant. Right? <laughs> Watch it this weekend. I'll, I'll, I'll spoil it. No, I should. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil it. Okay, so the Ark of the Covenant, that's the, the, this like box that God made the people of Israel create, right? And they're hunting for it. And if you remember the final scene, they open it. They open it, and then what happens? Everyone Everybody comes, this crazy spirit thing comes out, and everyone's face is basically just melt off, right? It's like, too much. You, you with me? Hello, yes? So, what would it mean to die in Plato's honey head, then? Your face would melt off. Come on, no. 
you're missing, missing the point. Too much knowledge leads you down to the path of destruction. Okay, yeah, yeah, like like uh, too much. I love that. Say that again. That's beautiful. Too much knowledge leads you down the path of destruction. destruction. And who wants to know? Amen. Yeah, exactly. And what does he want to do? Strike, Strike through, through the mass because what does he hate more than anything? The inscrutable thing, right? And here we have this bizarro moment where all of that sort of thing is coming to one place. You with me? And, of course, we've been, uh, no, listen, I'm going to put another little thing up here, which I didn't tell the other class because I didn't think they could handle it, right? Um, but you guys, you can. Do you guys, who, what smart apple out there remembers what chapter 23 was about? Very short chapter, a six-inch epitaph, in fact. That wasn't it, like, in Give me the name. Oh, the guy. The guy. Come on. The hell, the guy. The hell. Yes. Who oh, just oh. came back on the yes. line? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yes, but what's the chapter called? The Lee Shore. The Lee Shore. All right. Remember this. And if you remember, in this chapter, so this is part of this too. Listen, in the Lee Shore, Ishmael says, "Look, on land you get all the comforts of the body, right? But at sea, it's wonderful." Deep thinking happens out there, right? It's 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 dangerous, right? We know. In fact, what does he tell us happened to Bulkington? He said he said he had an ocean perishing. Are you with me? And what does the land do to old uh, Bulkington's feet? It scorches it. So he needs to leave the land, go to sea. And if you remember from Ishmael's point of view, that's not about just like going on a voyage. It's about pursuit, right, of deep things. Well, what is this now chapter telling us about that sort of thing? Yeah, it could kill you. And by the way, I have another one to put on here, which I didn't mention that other class either. But maybe they'll watch the movie of chap of uh, period three. Where's another place where you have to worry about this kind of thing, where you get lost in thought, and it might actually kill you? Yes. Do you guys remember this? The masthead, Ishmael's swaying up there, and he loses all sense of self. Yes, and he's loving it, and then suddenly, what? Well, you could lose grip, right, with reality, and perish. Now look, how would falling from the masthead be a sort of sweet death? What were you doing? Yeah, you were having this really beautiful transcendent moment, right? And yet, it could cost you your life. So, I hope you guys see, you know, you're making some notes here. Do you have a, where's your picture of all this confluence? And look, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want you to think about this for a minute. This is, this is like my little interpretation. Again, this is an aesthetic principle. Do you guys understand what that means or not? Say, like, I don't know what you mean by that. Um, or tell me you know, you know. All right, here's what I mean. Aesthetic means having to do with beauty, right? Okay, so my point is, if this is art, right? If this guy is an artist, which I think we all agree Melville is, he does his art in certain ways, right? Do you guys know, like, do you guys know any artists? Like, could you name an artist off the top of your head? Like, like, that we all know. Like, okay, Picasso, right? Like, when you look at a Picasso painting, you probably know what to expect. Don't you feel like, oh, yeah, that's Picasso. You expect maybe some distortion, right? Um, things to be kind of abstract, right? A certain kind of use of color. Like, you'd never mistake that for Picasso, right? Because he has certain principles that he operates in with. You, you follow me? Like, and you, and you, even if you're not an art student, you kind of know what to expect. And what I'm trying to tell you is, this is one of the things that makes Moby Dick tick, the novel, is that it's got these moments where he's been kind of like passing out little motifs or illusions, and then there'll be these awesome instances where he like puts them all together in one scene, right? It comes up three or four times. Keep your eyes out for them. And here's well, maybe the last thing I'll say about this. It reminds me of one of the major ideas of the novel, which is this. Threads, various, like what good is a thread? Not much. But what do you do with threads? You weave them together. Mm. Weaving, what do you weave on? A loom, right? So there's all this idea of threads and weaving and convergence. And it's one of the things that uh, thematically is part of the novel, but it's also kind of aesthetically just like how it's organized. This is maybe over some of your heads. I don't know. But I hope not. You know what I always say? If you talk over people's heads, you know what they'll do? They're more gossip. That's like, I think I made that up. I like that. If you speak just over someone's head, you make them look up. 
You like that, Luke? I hope so. All right. Cisterns and buckets. Important chapter or not? Yeah. I'd say so. And again, not because of plot, really. I don't think much. I mean, it's kind of a fun little plot moment, but it doesn't affect a larger story, I don't think. Um, but lots of uh, interesting ideas swirling around. And you see, of course, you see the, the, the old uh, the tick, right? You see the tick here? Yeah. Right? Do we have a, a literal instance? Yeah. Something actually going on? Yeah. Yes. But what matters is not that. It's like the thing that gets him thinking about. What does he end up talking about in the end? Plato. Yeah, Plato. And uh, there's, a, there's an old legend about Plato. You ready for this? Yes. Wasn't it that he... Um, when he spoke, it was as smooth as honey when it came out. Yes, and there's actually, though, another story about, like, actual honey being in his mouth. Yeah. Um, in his skull or something like that. There's an old legend about it. So, but the, the bottom line is, I think, uh, if you want to, like, get the bottom line, it's like, here we are again, this uh, thematic dichotomy is being set up again between uh, thinking, the thinking life, the life of the mind, and the life of the body. And there's a kind of warning here, Right? You pursue the things of the mind too strenuously. Yeah, you may perish in some way. Well, listen, if you guys don't see this, do you guys see how this chapter here is a lot like this chapter here? Look, where does Pip end up? No, no, no. I, I, I'm sorry. When he's floating on the water. What, is this, what does Ishmael say happened to him? He was lonely. Like something about his soul. Yeah, his soul, like, went down to the bottom of the sea. I mean, picture this. Think about this for a minute. How old is Pip? Do you have any idea? He's very young. He's probably like 12. He's a little cabin boy. He's a kid. And imagine this. I don't know if you guys have ever been out to the... Have you ever been to the ocean, like, where, like, blue water, like, you can't see land? Yeah. Like out in a boat, like 30 miles offshore, and there's like no land anywhere. Yeah. Now imagine you just plunk yourself there. You know, and for hours, you're just like floating alone on the water. I mean, that's kind of terrifying, don't you think? And, and he has a kind of terrible experience that Ishmael claims. Now, of course, you should say to yourself, like, how does he know this? Because obviously he was alone. He says, his soul went down to the bottom of the ocean. And there he saw strange things, right? Now, where were, when were we last on the bottom of the ocean? Oh, I pray that you can answer this question. You're talking about like the whale and how Okay, come on. Be more precise. When were we all, in our reading, last on the bottom of the sea, the very bottom? When Ahab was talking to the head. Yeah, don't move. Ahab's talking to the head. Hold on, just stop for a minute. He's talking to the head, and he says, Thou hast died, right? You've seen. You remember this? And all this terrible stuff. And notice he say, you've seen that which would make an infidel of Abraham. In other words, what would it do to Abraham's brain? It would just like blow it, right? Well, who just went down there? Yeah. Pip. And what happens to him? He's like a madman now, right? He's like insane because of what happened to him. You see, he's been in here. Where has his head been? To the bottom of the sea. And that's where Pip has been. Now, we're going to have to pick this up. So you only have like one chapter of college prep you have to read, two for honors.